Okay, it's not quite time to eat a meal, but I just need a quick snack to hold me over. That's it. I'm gonna have just one or two. Okay, three, and that's absolutely it. Ah, uh, well, there's only one more left, and you know I can't just waste that. What is that about? The snacks are delicious, and there's a reason for that. These cheap snacks and easy meals have been ultra processed. They're engineered to make us feel good with the perfect combination of fat, sugar, and salt. Experts have found ultra processed foods can be as addictive as smoking. Don't tell me I can't have my snacks. What's up, good people? I'm Alzo Slade here with Nat Geo to break down how everything you experience and consume on a daily basis can affect your body in ways you may not expect. So let's get chomping. Right now, what does ultra processed food do to my body? When you're hungry and exhausted after a long day, you may find yourself swinging through the drive-through or ripping open a pack of instant ramen. We've all been there. Ultra processed foods have been making the news and not for good reasons. But what are they actually? Packaged snacks and fast foods, commercially baked breads and breakfast cereals, sugary sodas and desserts. We're not talking about the cupcakes your grandma makes. These are made in a factory and often with a long list of ingredients that you probably can't pronounce. They're made to last for a long time, in the warehouse, on the grocery shelf, or sitting in the back of your pantry. Food processing isn't new. There's evidence our ancestors have been grinding grains to make flour for tens of thousands of years. Most of what we eat is processed in some way, growing, harvesting, preparing, and getting it to market. But what makes ultra-processed foods different are the additives, like stabilizers, emulsifiers, flavors, and dyes, all designed to be pleasing, which makes us want to eat more and more while we're missing out on the vital nutrients we need. It all starts with cheap, edible ingredients sourced from food, which are then refined, pounded, heated, melted, shaped, extruded, packed with additives, and put back together like Frankenstein. It's alive! It's alive! No, serious, to the point where they're essentially pre-digested. The resulting products can be so easily absorbed into the body that they bypass the feeling of fullness and drive us to overeat. Let's turn to National Geographic editor Ali Yang to break down what ultra-processed really means. Ultra-processed foods are made up of ingredients that they themselves are not really ingredients. It's like extracts from foods. There's one framework people have to classify how much meddling is done with um, foods. One is a whole food. We're talking about an apple, a banana, one ingredient. Processed ingredients, which is instead of corn, it's cornstarch. It's a product from a food. Then we've got processed foods, which is a cheese or a yogurt, something where the preservative is salt, where there's not so many ingredients. And then there's ultra processed food, which is lots of different ingredients and all of the ingredients will be processed ingredients from that second group. Thanks, Allie. Now that we know what they are, let's dig into what they do. What is often thought of as a guilty pleasure can be a long-term threat to your health. Research has uncovered links between ultra-processed foods and 32 different medical conditions, which can increase your overall risk of death. The brain, the gut, the heart, they appear to be the most affected. For a long time, all the fat and sugar in these foods have given them a bad reputation. In 2019, the National Institute of Health decided to focus on what impact just the processing can have on the body. They compiled two groups of men and women and had them live in a lab for two weeks with controlled diets. One group was offered only ultra-processed and factory-made food. The other had homemade and minimally processed options. Both diets had the same nutrients like salt, sugar, fat, and fiber, and participants could eat as much or as little as they wanted. The scientists were surprised by the results. The ultra-processed group ate an average of 500 more calories a day and gained more weight and body fat. So what's driving us to keep putting these Frankenstein foods in our mouths? To answer that, let's first look at why they're being made. 
If ultra processed foods aren't good for us, why do they exist? The unfortunate answer, the money, the profit, the moolah. The ingredients are cheap, and there's less waste for manufacturers when things don't spoil. Plus, let's be honest, we really, really like them and keep coming back for more, which benefits their bottom line. Let's turn back to our friend, National Geographic editor, Ali Yang, to explain why we keep reaching for the junk. Research shows that if you're eating ultra-processed food, it will spike your blood sugar, but not give you the corresponding amount of fullness that you should feel given that you've eaten that much food. This is something that can get worse over time. So like if you're eating a lot of ultra-processed food, it makes you less and less full eating the same, let's call it like a bag of chips over time. Let's take this from a different angle. Food and beverage companies are working hard to create demand and brand loyalty. With product placement, ad campaigns, and celebrity promotions, hooking kids from a young age. And get this, during the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, to limit our exposure while shopping, we were stocking up on shelf-stable options. Food and drink companies also took advantage during COVID by marketing ultra-processed foods as essential products, donating them to vulnerable populations, and targeting kids with ads on online education sites. Okay, we all want to eat healthier, but it's kind of hard. And your limitations can range from income, access, or time. We all know the mantra, eat your veggies. That still holds true, along with fruits and whole grains. You can try batch meal prepping for easy to reheat options, sticking to the outer edge of the grocery store, since most packaged foods are in the middle, and limiting the ultra-processed foods you do eat to ones that have some nutrients. Start small, and one day you may find yourself ultra-processed free on your homestead, making your own yogurts and raising chickens. That's what you like to do. Any one ingredient isn't inherently good or bad within moderation, because food is food. Finding the right balance can take time. By understanding what influences your choices, you can find what works best for you. Now it's your turn. What guilty pleasure are you not giving up? Or how about tips on easy swaps that work for you? Let me know, and I'll catch y'all later. I'm going to get some snacks.